What is going on, guys? We've got Daniel on the show today. This is actually the first past client interview we've done. We'll probably do a few more of these. Now, Daniel, he's a guy who came through the program about a year or two ago. Uh, he's he's a Pakistani guy, lives between the UK and Britain, or he lives between the UK and Bahrain, I should say. And, uh, and yeah, he's had a great journey. And I also thought it'd be great to have him kind of cover what it's like for like a South Asian guy to date in Europe and the UK. Because I know there's a lot of you guys out there who maybe you're Indian, Pakistani, or you know just a different South Asian ethnicity where maybe you have some doubts about your ability to meet different kinds of women. And yeah, so and so, so basically today, Daniel is going to be able to come on and kind of talk about that experience. Daniel, man, it's good to have you on. Uh, good to be on, Dave. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Excited to kind of dive in here. Um, so let's just kind of start off with with your story and, and just just kind of tell the listeners a little bit about yourself so they have some context here. Yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, you know, name's uh, Daniel, um, you know, quintessentially Pakistani, um, like cricket over baseball, um, love Bollywood over Hollywood. So like, you know, there's no one more Pakistani than I am. Spent a lot of my time in Pakistan. Uh, spent a couple of years in like America, but uh, yeah, yeah, man, like, you know, as quintessentially as Pakistani as, as you can get, even though I've lived in England for a while, still consider myself Pakistani. When people ask where I'm from, you know, I'm, I'm brown. <laughs> I'm South Asian. Yeah. I'm South Asian to the core. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. And when it comes to your dating life, can, can you give the listeners like a little bit of kind of a snapshot of where you were at like a year or two ago before you ever kind of came through our program? Yeah, not a, not a, not a problem at all. Like I never felt really that I was like in control of my dating life at all. I could get I could get some dates and I'd always get like the, you know and in my mind I thought the dates would go well because I could get the girls to like laugh, you know, and I thought that like oh it's just a matter of time before like you know I find the one but like I'd always get that dreaded text back, like I'd you know send the text the next day, and I'd it it was like almost like copy and paste the text response that I used to get, like sorry you know I had a really good time, but I didn't but I didn't feel like any chemistry, at all, and I remember like the and I remember like back then, initially I would think okay it's just a matter of time before like you know things will pick up, but when you're getting like a string of these text messages in a row. Like that causes some time that causes like self-reflection, like, okay, something's going on right now. Like if I'm getting these texts from different types of girls, the issue isn't them, it's me. Yeah. And so, so was that happening a lot of, I, I remember if I remember correctly, that was happening a lot after like first dates for you? Oh yeah. So I could like never get past, I could never get past like the first date. Um, it felt like an insurmountable mountain. And like, you know, there was, I wouldn't say like hopelessness, but I just felt like, you know, at times like, okay, what, what do I have to do to get over like this hump? You know, like, yeah, it's, it's just not making sense to me. And so how long was that going on for? How long were you kind of like at that plateau? Oh man, I was like, okay, so if we're talking since the pandemic, man, that was going on for like three to like two to three years. Like it was very rare that I'd get a second date. Like I can probably count on like one hand how many second dates I, I, I got. And even then it would just like fizzle out. And you know, it, it just wasn't really like a fun experience at all. I remember like dating was more like a, um, something that would like give me anxiety because I, I'd go into the date thinking, oh God, like I'm gonna get rejected again. It just, it just wasn't a really fun experience. I didn't really get to enjoy the company with the woman at all because I was just wondering, okay, you know, this is probably not going to lead to like a second date. And I was actually just dating for the sake of like dating, like just going through the motion. So I felt like normal and like part of society, like part of society, because that's something guys do. They like go, they go on dates, but it felt more of a chore than like a actual enjoyable experience where you get to enjoy the company with the person you're on a date with. Yeah, well, a lot of guys, I think they, they get they, – or they have this conception in their mind that once they start getting to the first dates, like they're good, <laughs> I'm going to be fine, right? But they never like really think past that and like, okay, what if I get 10, 15, 20 dates but I can't get past the first one? Then then what do I do? 
and it can be it can be really easy to kind of feel stuck or, or like it's a chore, right? One one hundred one hundred percent. I I remember like once I started getting first dates, like I told you, like I was of the mindset, like okay, now I'm just gonna get like the practice in, and eventually something's gonna like pan out. But like three years pass by, and you're like, oh shit, like <laughs> yeah. this isn't fun. This isn't fun at all. Yeah, there's no like time frame where you can just stay at one plateau. Like you could stay there for years, and and for some guys that they just never get past certain plateaus and they just settle, right? So, you know, we we've talked about this in the episode about kind of kind of how to get your dating life handled and, and how that timeline actually looks. And I guess I'm curious. So so when you were kind of in that zone, you were, you were getting first dates, not able to get past it, just struggling in general. Were, were there any just like cultural beliefs or, or just like beliefs, just being a South Asian guy specifically that you felt like may have been holding you back or anything kind of in that sense? Um, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be completely like honest with you. Like, I think that was something like I had that when I first moved to England, that was like a huge limiting belief that I had about myself. I like, I like when you, when, when we talk about like the stages of like guys typically go to towards getting their dating life handled, I went through all of them. I went, I, the first phase being the girl's just going to see me for what a great guy and nice guy I am. And she's just going to fall on the sky on my lap and we're going to live happily, happily ever after. Got over that, realized I had to like take action. And then I'd go on dates and I thought, oh, I'm like South Asian, you know, like, you know, um, like girls just inherently like unless we're like Shah Rukh Khan or someone like really that's a Bollywood that's a Bollywood actor I know the brown people the my fellow Pakistanis and Indians will know who who he is like unless I'm like really good looking like my South Asian ethnicity is gonna hold me back dating in the Western world so then like I hit the gym like I remember like five years ago like I was in like the best shape of my life because I was a boy like I got a PT like, you know, was really managing my calories. Like I was like obsessed of just getting in the best shape possible. But then again, like, you know, I'd still have the same, like stumble, same stumbling box at all. You know, I devoted all my time towards my career. I would, I used to work at a bank. I used to stay hours, like built my time, got promoted, thought with the extra like money and finances, like, you know, like my dating life would just, would just like sort itself out. Um, and it, and it, it just, just never, it just never happened. Just never happened. What's the reason you, 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 you think that happened where you, you, you focus on all these other things. You thought it was just going to work itself out and it didn't like what happened there? That's a good question. I mean, I'm going to, honestly, I think it was, I look back at it now and it's almost difficult to like put myself into like the mind space I was because I look at the guy like four or five years ago who had these beliefs. I was like, you're so stupid. Like, what are you doing, man? Like dating is like anything. Like you don't gain more muscle from the gym by just like thinking, you, you know, your physique is just going to work. It's, it's going to work. It's, it's going to work itself out. But now that I think about it, man, I think I look back at that guy five years ago. Everything was like a cope. I wasn't taking any personal responsibility for myself. I was blaming my physique for like my lack of success with w women, I was blaming my ethnicity. And I, th if we're going to be really brutally honest, I think I was just scared of rejection. I was just scared, you know, I was just, I wasn't willing to do like the hard work and actually put myself out there and get my dating life handled. Well, yeah, I mean, it can be hard to address things head on when you're in that kind of situation. Cause if you address it head on and then it still doesn't work, then it's like, okay, now you have no more cards to play. Yeah. I know there's a lot of guys out there kind of like that. Yeah, no, 100%. And I, I look back when I look at all the stages I went through and I'm like, man, I wish I found like, I found like a mentor like earlier, I could have saved myself like so many different like headaches and actually like enjoy life a bit more. Not a bit more, like a lot more, you know, like once you, once you get you, for me, like what I found is like once I got my dating life handled and was able to actually like date women, like on a consistent basis, like my life became so much more like enriched, just like little things like having a girl coming over, cooking dinner for, for you and just like chatting and like sharing, like, you know, sharing life stories, like life's just so much better that way. Okay, man. So you had all these limiting beliefs. You had these reasons why you weren't kind of attacking it. And it sounds like you were in that period for a few years. 
Can you tell the listeners a little bit about what your dating life looks like now, a few years later after having been in the program? Yeah, so once I joined the program, I remember it was, I was very skeptical, first of all. It was more like out of like, I had read your book, The uh, Lifestyle Blueprint, um, really, really liked it. And I was like, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to give, like he talks about dating, I'm going to give this a shot. Whatever happens, happens. At least I put in, I put in the effort. And even when I first joined the program, I remember the first day we had that uh, call where, you know, I committed that I was going to join. I was still very skeptical for that first week. And then I remember that I, that week I had two dates, one on Friday, one on Saturday. And I had just started to go through the material, lean on your advice. And honestly, it was like magic. <laughs> it's just like those two dates, like, I, I, like, it's funny because like, even looking back at those two dates, like they probably aren't very successful by the standards I have now. But, uh, you know, at that point, I was able to get like second dates with these girls. And it was like, a, it was like a, a flip. It was as if a a light switch had just like gone off or like flipped. And I told myself, okay, I, this is just week one. And I've just like, and I have just started employing like maybe 5% of the stuff that I've learned. And then I remember, remember thinking to myself, okay, I'm all in, let's go. Well, yeah, it's definitely good to have, to have some of that quick success because it, cause that's all right. I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep going hard now, which is great. And a lot of times too, a lot of, a lot of guys are doing the wrong thing. And once they start getting it cleaned up, they like, there's a, there's usually a few things they need to clean up that, that may have taken them years to figure out or realize. And once they clean those things up, it's like, oh shoot, now the floodgates are starting to open. Right. But they needed somebody to point those things out. So for you, do you remember like, what were some of those things, maybe some blind spots that you kind of figured out as you were coming through things that you kind of corrected on? Yep. So you could cool. actually start getting past those first dates? Um, on the dates, I would talk way too much. It used to be all about me. I used to think that like vulnerability was the key towards like, towards getting like second dates. And then I remember learning, well, you know, the more your date speaks, the more success you're going to have, because as long as you can frame questions and actually get to know her on a personal level, and if she's talking like, like, 70 60 percent of the time she will feel closer towards you another may and this is embarrassing <laughs> another thing i used to do is um i used to go for the makeout a bit too long used to get very excited and uh, you know on honestly this is something i would have never figured out by myself that like if you pull back when you're making out with your date um that creates more tension um it's not even like a it's not even a it's not even a sleazy tactic or anything you're just showing that you you know you're a guy that has like self-restraint it has the added benefit of creating more sexual tension and it you know creates a path where she'll actually she will actually want to see you more and you get to like know her even better and you know date her um you know consistent you know in my experience you know, she's more open to the second, third or fourth date. And it leads to more like intimate experiences where, you know, your dating life isn't just, um, it isn't just you making out with her in a bar. It's you going over to her place or she coming or she comes back to your place. And yeah, man, yeah, that it's, it's funny because like, I look back and you know, that's something I would have never figured out by myself at, at all. I I could like now see myself making that mistake. Like had I not like started working with you, that's something I could have been struggling with for the next like 10 years had someone not pointed that out to me. Well, yeah, I think a lot of guys, they, they like those long 5, 10, 15 minute long makeouts at the end of the date. And then they come out of the date thinking, oh, that went so well. She kissed me at the end. It's all good. And not realizing that they basically killed all the tension with the long public makeout that just like wasn't necessary. And if they can clean that up, they have a lot more tension and a lot more excitement going forward into the next dates. Yeah, one hundred percent. I that first date I went on since joining your program, I remember I dated I dated that girl like for maybe like a month or two, and um, you know. 
things eventually like fizzled out as well. Like I started going on more dates as well. But, uh, you know, she even hit me up like six months later, was just in the area, you know, and um, even though things had like fizzled out, you know, she invited me out for a drink and yeah, we, we had fun that night. <laughs> solid, solid, man. It's, it's always good to have that. And this kind of flashing forward to today, right? After you've learned all this, you've, you've gotten past some of these plateaus. How do things look for you now dating wise, even like a weekly, monthly basis for you? Like on a weekly basis, I'm going on like three dates a week. So let's say like 12 dates a month. I've actually like, I, I have actually decided to like pull back because <laughs> it was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was going on so many dates per week. I've actually like become now like much more selective by, ch you know, by choice. So now like it's instead of, uh, having to go to three to four date, uh, three to four dates a week, I, you know, I'm in a position now where I can date girls on a more consistent basis and I don't have to be going, I don't have to go on like three to four dates a week. And it's a really good place. Um, you know, as a typical like South Asian guy, I don't know what your viewers are like, not the best cook in the world, but one of my favorite things is really getting to know a girl and like either her coming over to your place and like cooking like a delicious meal, you know, watching like watching a movie, getting to know each other. Like for me, these are like the enriching experiences, which have like really added value to my life. Um, just had a date yesterday. It was, yeah, just so much fun, man. <laughs> Yeah, so so not not even just about go, going on dates, but also the connections you're making from it, and and just kind of like those those moments of intimacy you're having with cool girls. Yeah, and even like as you have like these intimate these moments of intimacy, like I'm so much more selective. Like I've realized that like I can have these moments of intimacy and still hold back because I'm still like vet I, I am still vetting these girls. Um, whereas like I five years ago, had had I been having their you know, dating life that I had now, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to marry this girl. Like, you know, I found the one, we have a good time, like, you know, we really vibe with each other. But now my standards have gone are much higher. I'm, I now think to myself, okay, is she like, someone who I can see myself with for the future? Do her values align with me? Does she want a family life that I that I want? Um, you know, uh, nothing wrong with her having career aspirations either, but is she going to be someone that's married to her career career and not have time to devote towards a married, li married life? So, you know, that's the stage where I'm at right now. Awesome, man. Awesome. awesome. So, yeah, so it sounds like you've built up a lot of confidence. You've got a lot more results. You get a lot more women in your life and uh, get just a lot more volume in general that you're working with. 100%. Another thing I don't have to worry about is I told you like I'm between Bahrain and London as well. Um, geography isn't like a factor for me anymore. Like I can go to like, I feel I have the, well, I feel, I know I have the ability to like go to any country and have these enriching experiences like wherever I am. Yeah, I mean, it's nice having that, right? I tell guys all the time, I live in 20, 25 countries. And if you have the fundamentals down, sure, there's going to be things that are a little different. You know, it's things are a little bit different in Japan than they would be in Germany, than they would be in Mexico. But it, with the right fundamentals, you're going to be able to get women attracted no matter where you go. And uh, you're going to be able to have a good time rather than the guy who can't who can't get a girl to save his life in, in Mexico is not going to be able to do it in Germany or Japan or wherever, right? If you got it, you got it. And if you don't, you're going to struggle everywhere. Yeah, if you don't if you don't have the fundamentals in place, like do not think about just moving to a different country and your dating life's gonna like sort itself sort itself out. Um you need to have the fundamentals. Um yeah, some countries it is easier to have more success in dating than others, but if you have the fundamentals down, it's easy anywhere you are. Yeah, man. And, and so, so the, the, sort of the newfound confidence that you have get, getting further in the dating process with, with women, kind of enjoying yourself, like has this impacted other areas of your life too? 100%. So when I started working with you, I was in a soul crushing bank job, which, you know, I hated. And whether I want to believe it or not, the fact that I felt that I could not get my dating life handled, it gave me this belief that, well, if I can't get this thing handled, how am I going to how am I going to leave the safe confines of this bank and make it out by myself as like as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, but once I was able to actually have success with my dating life, these limiting beliefs slowly evaporated 
And I believe it was maybe seven or eight months after I joined your program, I decided that I'm not going to work here anymore. Um, limiting beliefs are, you know, in the very definition of what they are, they're a limiting belief that you've imposed on yourself. And uh, yeah, quit that job, you know, started copywriting. Um, just right now, before I jumped on the call with you, I had like a, I, you know, I had a fintech company that reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do work with them. So, uh, you know, all, it, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent over here, because I speak to friends and I've spoken to a lot of guys. Lots of guys think that they have to sort all those other aspects of their life aside from dating. Once they get the finances, the physique, all that stuff, their you know, their dating life will just like sort itself out. My experience has been the opposite. I've found that once I've been able to sort out my dating life, it's given me the confidence to attack these other aspects of my life head on. And I've had more success since then. Yeah, so I mean, it sounds like the better you go to dating, you started thinking a little bit bigger, taking a little bit more risks, trying to trying to live a better lifestyle that more aligned with kind of like what your values were and, and what you what you were looking for. Yeah, if you can go like, and if you at a if you're at a cafe shop or grocery store or just like on the street, and you see like a girl that's cute, and you go up and like start a conversation with her, get her number. I don't care what anybody got, any guy says, like for most guys, that is one of the most daunting things in the world. Like we live in modern society, so we're not out there like hunting, we're not hunting for animals anymore. This is like, you know, this is, you know, quintessentially getting out of your comfort zone and attacking like the demons head on. So if you can do that, you have no issues going out and like, you know, learning a new skill set getting more clients. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, awesome, man. Yeah. That, that was kind of the same story for me too. Right. You know, the, the better I got with dating, the more it's like just taking crazy risks, getting after it and just, uh, you know, travel around doing all that stuff. So amazing stuff there. And, uh, yeah. So let's transition a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more about kind of like the South Asian factor when it comes to dating. So what would you say are some like the, the biggest obstacles that maybe you've seen or maybe you've seen with friends, other guys that, that South Asian guys have when it comes to dating in the Western world, you know, places like Europe, UK, America. Yeah. Um, if we, this is a common trait amongst like, it's something I felt. I know other South Asians are going through this. We can outthink ourselves out of anything. I remember like just toying with the idea. And this is before like I started working with you. Um, toying with the idea of like approaching a woman and I could think of like a million different reasons why I should not like go out and approach that woman. Oh, she has her headphones on. Oh, she's on the, she just got off the phone. Obviously she's talking to her boyfriend, you know, because what other reason could a woman have for like, you know, going on the phone other than like talking to like talking to a boyfriend. Um, another thing that I think we like that's very common among South Asians is that listen it's we come we come from like a very unique family structure and there's lots of positives to it like we're we're very loyal towards our parents like our family the, the you know making our parents happy is something that's important and these are like great traits to have you know being acquiescent like towards our and showing deference towards our elders all of these are good things we don't want to we don't want to make them upset but when it comes when it comes to dating, you know, you, you kind of have to detach yourself and realize that we're not dealing with our family. We're dealing with like females, and they want you to like take the they want you to like take the lead. Um, you know, so like lots of these characteristics that we have, like what we don't realize is that like these are characteristics that women want. We're like very loyal when it comes to fam we're very loyal when it comes to family. Um, you know, if we would ever have kids, like we'd really believe in like the, we would really believe in having like a proper family nucleus and we do our best to make sure like that our kids would have the best lives as possible. But on the flip side, we tend to be very acquiescent, um, subservient. And that leads to a mentality of when you're on a date, we're not the best, or for me personally, I wasn't the best at flirting and stating my intentions because I thought I was being like, disrespectful 
Um, and that was, once I was able to get over that mental hurdle after working with you, things have, you know, improved dramatically. And sorry, I just wanted to add, add, add just one, one more thing. Um, we think that, that flirting or like being sexually forward, we think we're disrespecting the woman. Oh, we don't, we don't want to offend her. We don't want to make her upset, but I can 100% say if you show your intentions in a, in a proper, in a proper way, <laughs> um, the girls will be much more appreciative and it leads to much better dates, not only for you, but for them as well. Yeah. So it sounds like from, from hearing that there, there's, there was a lot of overthinking at a lot of the different phases of, of the process of dating for you. And it sounds like just the way you're raised culturally, that could, you feel like that could be the case for a lot of other South Asian guys too, or, 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 or maybe even get caught up in like overthinking, things like that. 100%. If you don't mind me just adding one more thing, uh, you know, another thing, another thing which I really enjoyed about the program, and I'm going to explain why I'm mentioning this was like the camaraderie, not the camaraderie ship, but that as well, but the accountability and being with like-minded guys. Because when I first joined the bank, there were a couple of South Asian guys who I leaned on as mentors, which I really wish I hadn't, because they would just fill my head with garbage. Like, you're South Asian, you have to be better than everybody else when it comes to dating, because people don't view you as like, you know, a sexual entity. Um, you know, you they almost, you know, girls will never go for like a South Asian unless he's like amazing. So you need to work on your finances, you need to be in like the best shape possible. When in reality, it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with being South Asian. As a guy, you should just be the best version of yourself that you can be. But that being said, the way you get to the best version of yourself, in my experience, was work on all aspects of your life, not just your finances, not just going to the gym, but your dating life as well. That is a skill that you need to have. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and as as you know, just dating as a South Asian guy, like, have you been mainly dating other uh, dating other South Asian girls? Has it been a mix? Like, what's that been like for you? It's 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 been it's definitely been a mix. Um, I mean, you know, I don't discriminate. I, I as long as long as they're be, as long as they're beautiful, man. Like, I I have no you know I have no like I have no racial preferences at all. I've dated white women. I've dated South Asian women ironically the only time race has become a factor has been with like south asian women like if i'm dating an indian woman they'll say oh that's something like my family won't uh, you know dating a pakistani guy that's not something my f family would approve of um i've never got that from like white women that being said as well i've dated lots of like you know i've dated lots of like indian women as as, as well and um you know i look back and it's it was mainly me, like ethnicity has a role in everything in life, but we tend to overblow it. And if we're going to be completely honest with each other, um, every, like lots of guys have, you know, some preferences when it comes, when it comes to women. Um, but that, you know, we all, we all have preferences when it comes to women, but do you think those women are like going around, like walking around the world thinking, oh, it's because of like my ethnicity, I'll never be able to find a guy? Um, abs absolutely not. There's so many women out there. And if just one woman doesn't like you because of your ethnicity, there's billions of women out there, man. Uh, and, you know, um, they'll have like no issues. In fact, it can even add as like a positive because coming from a different cultural background, you can bring up like funny anecdotes which like someone from a different like a white woman like you know if she grew up in england like maybe her family's a bit more like you know prim and proper and is not used to like these cultural experiences that you've had like that you've had growing up and you can share this it's it's actually something that can work towards your benefit as well yeah i mean that definitely makes sense and and it's like with anything right if you're super tall short if you know a certain ethnicity you look a certain way maybe you have a lot of tattoos or you don't have any tattoos there's going to be certain things that some women are all for it and some women are just like not for it at all and so th th there's going to be these these kind of polarities in, in any guy 
and like you can't control a girl's preferences you can just control being the best version of you showing up having good fundamentals communicating well flirting well connecting and kind of seeing where it goes from there rather than saying oh you know i'm pakistani or i'm i'm indian or i'm short i'm tall like it's it's not gonna work i can't make this happen and it makes no sense whatsoever because i've heard guys say that i've been on a date with a girl like let's say they match with her on an app and they said, oh, it didn't work out. And I asked why. And they're like, oh, I'm Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, whatever. But I'm thinking, wait, dude, you went on a date with her. So she was like physically attractive. She, 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 know, she knows that you're, she, she knows what you, what you are. She knows you're Pakistani. She, she knows what's going on. You know, it's not a complete blind date or something. Yeah, exactly. So I, it's not your ethnicity, man, that's good, that, that caused her not to be interested in you. It's probably you were lacking some other fundamentals. You didn't know how to communicate with her. You didn't know how to connect with her on a more meaningful level. You didn't know how to flirt or escalate things or, you know, it could be a million other things, but it wasn't your ethnicity because she's seen your picture <laughs> and she knows what. Yeah. That's, like. that's a dangerous thing too. Right. When, when guys, they, it's a, it's a way of not taking responsibility when you just put the blame off on something else that's out of your control, like your ethnicity and say, that's why, well, then you're not, you're not like really reflecting and correcting the things that you could correct because you're just kind of throwing the blame off, right? Rather than really reflecting and addressing what can, what can be improved. And so that way you just sort of get, that's how you get stuck in those plateaus. What would you say? Cause there's probably a lot of uh, South Asian guys listening to this who maybe they want to get out there and start improving their dating life, but maybe they have a lot of limiting beliefs or they're not sure it's possible for them. What advice would you have for those guys who want to get out there and really start making some improvements? Well, the first thing I'd say is like, if you're already looking or watching this YouTube video or whatever on social media, there's a part of you that wants to change your dating life. And I can speak from personal experience that if I was able to do it, anybody can. I had like crippling social anxiety. I mean, I, we, let's be honest, like with, you know, with ourselves, guys, like we tend to overthink things. There's a part of you that's probably thinking, yeah, it's okay for this guy, but my situation's different. Promise you it's not. Like when I would meet strangers, I would sweat profusely. Like if I could do it, anybody else could do it as well. I'd say just like take action and whatever voice you have inside your head, it could be any reason that's telling you that this isn't for me or I'm not ready to change your dating life. Just put it on mute take action and I promise yourself in a couple of months, you won't regret it. And if you really want to expedite your results, I'd suggest, I'd highly recommend getting a mentor. Personally, you guys do what you want to do, but I'd recommend Dave because the amount of experience I've seen in just a couple of months with working the guy with the guy, you know, it would have taken me years to do that by myself. And might it not even be years i probably might not even have been able to resolve it if it wasn't for like a mentor because we don't really have like you know south asian dads who we can really or moms who we can talk about dating um you know they might talk about like arranged marriage or they might be of the type that oh you just be yourself it will all work out and they have good intentions but let's be honest with ourselves it's not gonna happen you have to take action Yeah, well, I think it's like a lot of parents, right? They want the safe and secure option for you rather than like the option that, that might actually be right for you. So that that's one thing to keep in mind too. And we've talked about this before, but like your parents can have the best intentions for you. But at the end of the day, most just want the safe and secure path because they want you to be okay. They don't want you out there in the fire taking risks. But at the same time, like the life you want to have, the dating life you want to have is on the other side of those risks. So you can't be afraid to, to kind of step into the fire and see what happens. No, exactly. I mean, you hit the, you said it perfectly, like your parents have like the best intention from you. But the fact is they grew up in a different generation where the dating dynamics were different. You just had to have a good job, be an average guy and your dating life probably 30 years ago would have would have worked itself out but you know as we know now that's that's not the case you really have to um you know upskill yourself as a man and part of that upskill is really refining and getting your dating life handled 100 percent, 100 percent, man well yeah, i would say definitely some great takeaways here for for you south asian guys who aren't sure you can do it i would say 
Danielle is definitely proof that it can happen. And uh, yeah, so don't give up. Keep pushing. And if you want a mentor, you know where to find us. So Danielle, thank, thanks again for hopping on, man. No worries, Dave. It's been great.